Hey man, automation is a great tool to add movement and excitement to your mix. Let's check out how we can use this in Logic Pro X. What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com and today we're going to be taking a look at how to automate parameters in Logic. Now, you're probably asking, Wavy, what's automation? Is that kind of like drawing pictures and having to move it is kind of like that except that's animation this is automation automation in logic pro x is the ability to record changes to your mix and have them play back in real time logic offers a few different automation modes that you can use to automate things like volume pan mute your send volume send pan send mute and parameters within a plugin we're going to take it a we're going to take a simple look at automating in Logic. All right, so here we go. Hey, man, I want to give a big shout out to Mackie for sponsoring this video. They make studio gear that's built like a tank. And right now we have a giveaway going on that you can enter to win some amazing prizes. If it's still going on, you can click the link down in the description below to enter. Let's find our automation mode selector. I, I like to do this by opening up my mix view here in Logic. You can go up to the top on the toolbar, open up this mix view, and you'll see the automation section, okay? By default, the automation mode is set to read. That means that it's only gonna play back the automation that's already existing. If you don't have any automation, then nothing's gonna happen there, but that is the default setting. We can click here on this automation mode selector and change to the different automation modes. Now I'm going to go over these top few as these are my favorite touch, latch, and right. Well, actually, let's start with right mode because that's actually my least favorite automation mode. As you see, soon as I enable right mode, <laughs> it lets me know right mode erases multiple parameters in one go without touching anything. In most cases, it's better to use latch or touch. So you can see even logic doesn't like right mode. The software itself doesn't want you to be using right mode. So I'm not gonna use uh, right mode much, but I do wanna show you how this actually works in comparison to the other automation modes. To view our automation inside of our logic session, what we wanna do is go back to our edit view and at the top, you'll see this little kind of breakpoint uh, graphic representing the show hide automation button. Once we're showing our automation, then we can actually go and see all the parameters. So you can see right now I'm in write mode and I'm currently going to be writing automation for the volume of this track. We can get a little more technical, but we're going to keep it super simple today. Now, basically, since I'm in write mode, all I have to do is hit play and automation will automatically start to be recorded. It's going to overwrite anything for all of the parameters that are app applicable, including mute automation, pan automation, send automation, anything that possible. So that's why that warning comes up. We don't really want to use write mode, but if I hit play, you'll see. Get paid in the off season. All that beef, I'm not vegan. They used to call me young heathen. I keep that heat, it's op season. All right. Automation was just written. And if I change this back to read mode, right, because we can't really see any breakpoints, but if I change it back to read mode, as I try to change the volume of this track, as soon as I hit play, you see, if you notice, right, I will come down here to make it a little more noticeable. You see how it's just jumping back? That's because the state of that fader has been recorded and written in by automation. Let's take a look at either touch or latch modes, which are much better, in my opinion, to create and write your automation in Pro Tools. So we're going to actually undo that, make sure we undo all that automation. And then I'm going to go, instead of being on read mode, I'm going to go to touch mode. Now, touch mode is actually my favorite automation mode to use in any DAW. I like touch mode because it doesn't start to record the parameter until you actually touch and modify that parameter. As soon as you release that parameter, no automation is being recorded any longer. So it just makes it very easy for you to update automation and, you know, maybe do some automation rides, uh, do some automation in this point, let the song play, add a little more automation, let the song play and not change anything that you don't want to change. Let me give you an example of how this touch mode works. So for this, I'm just going to hit play. Unlike right mode, no automation is being recorded. Now, once I actually touch this volume fader, you can see that I'm actually recording my automation now. 
And when I stop, let me actually go. I'm going to back this up a little more so we have a little time. But only when I actually touch and modify the parameter is it recording automation. As soon as I release, it automatically goes back to the last recorded state. So that's touch mode. I love that. It's a whole lot better for me to work with as I often am using automation to update small parts of my session. Maybe raise the volume in a certain section or turn up the send delay or the, the send to a delay or a reverb only on certain parts of the song. Touch automation is my favorite. Now, if we click and change our automation mode over to latch, right? Latch is a lot like touch mode in the way that it actually starts recording the automation to where is no automation will be recorded until you actually touch and update that parameter. So I'm in latch mode. I'm playing back my session. Nothing is happening until I actually touch and change the parameter. Now we've changed, but the difference is while you're in latch mode, that automation will continue to hold until you stop the playback. It'll keep re recording automation from that last point. It latched on to that, all right? You can come in after you've recorded your automation. If you need to update anything or make any changes, you can come in and move and edit these breakpoints manually. Once you're done with your automation, it's best to get out of any automation mode other than read. This will make sure that you don't accidentally record over the automation that's already existing. So once you're happy with it, just go ahead and change to read mode and you can continue to work on other tracks and mix in throughout your session. All right, y'all, that has been a quick beginner's look at how to use automation in Logic Pro X. I'm Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com. If you found this helpful, make sure you share this and hit a thumbs up and drop down in the comment. Let me know what else about Logic you want to learn. Also, visit my website, wavywayne.com, where you can find a session template to help you record and mix better and faster. Be dope. Thank you.